the ultimate review of the University of Bath. If you are starting in Bath in September or are deciding whether to apply to the University of Bath, then this is going to be the perfect video for you. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Aaron and I'm a third year computer science student studying at Bath and I'm currently on my study abroad year in Singapore. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing all things University of Bath, the campus, the facilities, the sports and societies, city, everything. Timestamps for everything will be on screen and in the description, so feel free to skip around to what you're looking for. So let's start by talking about the campus. The University of Campus is very small and with... <laughs> are, we, are, you, are you wondering what I'm reading? Well, uh, my blog, uh, aaronkerr.com. So check out my article on the University of Bath there. <sighs> always plugging, always plugging. But the campus, the campus is small, okay? Now, that can be good or it can be bad or a bit of both. A small campus means that you're going to get to places pretty quickly. So you won't waste any time in transit, which is good because at Bath, because it's small, everything is centrally located around what's called the parade. So off that parade, which is basically just a strip, you have the library, cafes, food and drink, the lake, and all the places, not all the places, most of the places where you'll do lectures kind of spawn off that parade. However, some bad things about small campus is that there's not a lot of stuff, right? On big campuses, campi, campuses, yeah, on a big campus, you, you'll be able to get a load of different things. So you might have six coffee shops, six places where you go to eat. At Bath, you don't get a lot. What you do get is good, but you don't get a lot of stuff. So how does the campus actually look? A lot of the buildings, they just look average, to be completely honest. The inside's good, but from the outside, a lot of them, they just look average. Although the new business building looks amazing. However, although the buildings only look average, I would say the campus is extremely nice. And the main reason for that is because it's very green, right? So especially the outskirts of the campus, there's some nice walks, especially where there's sunset, you can get some good photos. You know, it's, it is really nice. So if you're into the whole environment thing, I'm not, then, yeah, you'll definitely like going on a fresh run. Fresh run? What even is that? You can tell I don't run. Um, you'll enjoy going on a run or a walk to get some fresh air. Right, so a big section is going to be the facilities that Bath offer. So we'll start off by talking about the sporting facilities. The Sports Training Village is what it's called. Now, it's a world-class facility. It is very, very good. You know, Bath have put a lot of money into it because Bath is known for being like a sporty university. Unfortunately, it is a shame <laughs> because that means that there's sporting people at Bath. You guys at university know, know what I'm talking about. You're coming back from uni late at night. Maybe you were in the library. Maybe you were doing a society or recreational sport. You go to the bus, headphones on, all of a sudden, a bunch of sporting people will just spawn in the back of the bus. They just spawn. And they're never alone, ever. It's always a bunch. You, you'll never see one alone. They spawn together and they're chanting, Ole, Ole, Ole. They're chanting that Ole song. I don't know who Ole is. Who's Ole? Do they even know who Ole is? And yeah, so unfortunately... At Bath, on the way back on the bus, you will be hearing the Olay song quite a lot. I'm having way too much fun with these sit-down videos. I'm going to be doing them more often. But the sporting facilities. So, two gyms, right? They've got two gyms. And gym one is, that's really good. It's my favorite one. It's big and it's got, it's, it really has got all the stuff you need. It's got the powerlifting stuff, bodybuilding stuff. It's got cardio. In terms of gym, you're set. Only problem, it gets busy. However, if you want a little hack, go to the gym in the mornings after the university drinking nights, which are on, I think, like Wednesday and 
they're just on weird days it makes no sense what days they're on but when you go to bath you'll you'll know go in the morning after those nights dead empty they also have a load of other stuff so they've got volleyball courts they've got beach ball body beach ball body ball wow that's something beach volleyball courts which are great to do in the summer if you've got like a bunch of people badminton courts swimming pool and all of these things you can book you don't have to be in any of the teams as long as you pay the sports membership which isn't a lot of money at all i can't remember how much it is um you get all of that however the gym membership which is more expensive um that's separate so if you want to use the gym you will have to pay the gym membership in addition to the sports membership right so another facility is the library the library is pretty good it is very functional so you'll have co-working spaces collaborative spaces level five i like level five a lot because you get your own little booth so or a pod kind of thing now it's more of a booth and other general sit down talking areas and now on to the students union yeah i mean it's 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 got a bar it's got i'll insert some pictures it's got tables where you can eat it looks really nice the upstairs bit um the downstairs no and also upstairs there's a tv and viewing area where you can watch like the whatever's on tv so the main stuff i think in my first year there was the football world cup it was um oh no it wasn't the world cup you know what i mean it was one of those things that everyone watches um and yeah they're on the tv so you can go down if you have friends and if you don't then well i guess sit by yourself okay so the food and drink food and drinks good at bath right they've got two main places where you can eat food they've got some a place called the lime tree and the fountain canteen or cafe one of them the lime tree is really good because it actually has they make fresh pizzas so you just yeah you select a pizza they put it in the oven and out comes a really nice pizza the fountain cafe is more of a buffet style so um it's not where you can eat buffet it's just like a buffet they've got different cuisines so you got chinese um fish and chips yeah, chicken and, and whatnot and you go and pick what you want so yeah i'll have this please this please thank you standard stuff really and it's good it's not amazing you won't go there and think oh that food was delicious it's just nice it's nice right so regarding the accommodation i'm not going to go too in depth into this because it's quite broad uh the best thing that you guys can do is is just check check the accommodation um i'll do a quick skim through you can get different types of accommodation so ensuite and non-ensuite i stay that on ensuite i say that the quads i do highly recommend the quads it was very good although the rooms are small but it doesn't really matter to have a big room because i mean you're not dancing or anything in it so yeah it was the desk space that was important and it has a big desk and that's the quads um should you go okay that is on so should you go for an ensuite you don't have to you know in second year most likely you'll be living with other people however when you've selected people you would have screened them so maybe it's safe if you have the budget to go on suite um but this is for you guys to weigh up, I guess. There's also options where it's catered or non-catered or half catered. Um, so what that means is you get credit and you can spend that credit on food and drink. I think mine was supposed to be catered, but it got canceled because of COVID. And honestly, I don't think you should factor in catered or non-catered, whatever, whatever, when selecting accommodation because all it gives you is credit and you can just go and you you still can buy stuff so if you want to buy your breakfast or your lunch or your dinner you can do that even if you have non-catered you just pay with card instead of paying with credit i think with credit you get a bit more credit for your pound but it's not that much of a difference so don't factor that in when selecting your accommodation 
Right, so the quality of teaching, or in Bath's case, lack of. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, that was a joke. There goes my grade. There goes my grade. Pff, gone. <laughs> right, on to the quality of teaching. It's good. You know, it is good. Most of the lecturers I've had have been pretty good. They've been good, um, with a few being really good. Another thing to add, at Bath, all lectures are recorded onto a software. So if you miss something or there was something you didn't quite understand in the lecture, that's every lecture for me. Um, you can just go back and watch exactly what you needed to watch. One thing, which maybe it falls under teaching, is what a lot of courses offer, but check your own course, is a placement and study abroad option. Now, you should really look into these. Don't have to do them. Definitely look into them to find out what they are. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. So let's start with the placement. So the placement will take place in your penultimate year of your course. So that is, you do first year at Bath, you do second year at Bath, third year you do your placement, and fourth year you come back to Bath to finish your degree. So what's the placement? Well, the placement is basically where you can get a job at a company. So Bath will have links to different companies. There's also a placement team, which will really help you to secure yourself a job. Now, this is obviously good because, well, you can come out of university already having a year of work experience under your belt. However, if you don't wanna do a placement, the placement is definitely the most popular option. Um, I think it was advertised on Bath's website for computer science two thirds go to do the placement. However, if you don't want to do it, then there's something else. But this, you have to be really cool to be able to do this. Only only cool people do it. It's called the, um, the study abroad option. That's it. It's study abroad. And yeah, if you know, if you know anyone doing it, I'm sure they're a G. And hypothetically speaking, if said person was doing it and had a YouTube channel, you should subscribe. But these are all hypotheticals, of course. And the study abroad option is basically the same structure as the placement, happens in your penultimate year, but instead of working, you study at an abroad institution. So Bath and your specific courses um, department will have links to different universities. You can't select your university in terms of oh, I wanna to go to that one, I'm going to that one. Bath will have contacts to universities, so check out what universities they have listed. And then what you do is you submit a rank list of your preferences where you want to go. Right, so on to the sports and societies. Honestly, Bath, they're lacking in that. There's actually not a lot of societies at Bath. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem because if they've got what you're looking for, just just check. Actually, I'll, I'll link the, the society's link for you. Um, if they've got what you're looking for, then it's all good. However, you might wanna check that before. Now, I do do one sport. I do recreational kickboxing and that's been class. Honestly, the, the coach there, he's a seventh degree black belt, Master T. So I'd imagine, and because this is only a recreational sport, I'd imagine if you wanted to do like bucks, that's it, the competitive sports, the quality of coaching will be good. So even though there's a lack of selection, they don't have the breadth. I should hope that they have the depth. See how I did there? That's a, that's a computer science kind of, yeah. Never mind, never mind. So another really important factor when selecting a university is the city that you're gonna be staying in. Because for the most part, you will be staying off campus in your second year and third year. Could be longer if you do a master's or PhD. So let's talk about Bath as a city. It's very nice, right? Bath's a historic um, city, town, sounds one of them. And um, yeah, it's really nice. Um, there's a lot of nice cafes, from what I've seen on the outside, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't, yeah, I haven't been in them, but from the outside, it looks nice. Um, there's, they've also got 
some nice cinemas. They've got your standard Odeon. And I think there's a nicer one called Tavoli. I know a few people that went there. That's supposed to be very nice. There's also some great restaurants and places to eat out. Indian, Chinese, the lot. Like really nice places. So get with a bunch of people and go hit those up for dinner. And if you're a rugby fan, the Bath Rugby, Bath, yeah, Bath Rugby Club. Uh, they've got their own stadium there. And that seems to be pretty popular a lot of the time while I was walking in town. I see a lot of people with the Bath Rugby colours because it's quite big in Bath, apparently. Right, so it's time to reach a verdict on the University of Bath. I would say that the University of Bath is, is good. <laughs> I'm kidding. No one's there. No one's holding me hostage. This has been my honest review. No, but on a real note, I would recommend the university. I've liked my time here so far. You know, I'll always add that disclaimer because things can change. But so far, I've enjoyed it. I thought it's been good for the most part. And I would recommend it. Also, if you have any questions about Bath, then please feel free to comment below because I'm going to be answering every single question that you have. And if there's a question which mm, you don't want to put out into the public, then message me on Instagram. It's Aaron.Kerr. Send me a DM. It's just between you and me and I'll give you my response. So everyone, thank you for watching the video. If you're new to this channel, then subscribe for some study abroad vlogs and other university related content and if you're a regular i.e no one you're probably wondering what what where's the vlogs gone don't worry the vlogs are coming back you know my shoulder doms delayed onset muscle soreness from all that all that vlogging so i've i've taken a step back but we're going to be coming back into it there's going to be some fire vlogs coming your way so be sure to stay tuned for those so thank you for watching as always, and I will see you in the next one.